Hi there everyone, it's Misty. Welcome to the ScrapbookPal.com YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be using some goodies from the newest Lawn Fawn release. I'm going to be using the Fly High stamp and die set along with the cloud background stencil. I'm going to start with stenciling. This is just a slimline piece of paper from my stash and I wanted a light pattern and I thought this would be really fun to stencil over. So I'm actually doing this on a white sheet of paper. I know it's hard to see, but I'm just getting this lined up and I'm using some washi tape to hold it down. I'm going to be using Distress Oxides today because oxides are more opaque, meaning that you can't see through them. And while I wanted this to be on a pattern, I didn't want the pattern to come through the clouds. So that's why I went with oxide rather than um, regular distress inks. I'm using tumble glass and broken china and I'm just using a little blending brush to blend this rather than lining them up like you can with this stencil. I'm just using one stencil to do the entire thing with one color and then I'm going to bring in the second stencil to do the other color and I'm not necessarily using the guides to line this up. You can kind of see here that there are faint outlines of clouds. Um, you can use those so that you can line this up to um, create a more cohesive kind of background or where the clouds overlap, etc. And again, I'm just going rogue. <laughs> I'm just using this how um, I wanted to. That way I didn't have to worry about lining things up, etc. So I just went ahead and did the entire sheet and then I'm going to move on to stamping. So I'm going to bring in um, some Memento Tuxedo Black and I'm going to be stamping on some Copic Friendly Paper. I'm going to be making three large balloons and then I'm going to be doing two small balloons. So I'm stamping the critters. So I'm doing the critters with the birthday hats. So there are my, there's a mouse with the birthday hat and then there is a mouse without. And you also have like a graduation cap and some other things that you can add on to them. And um, Lawn Fawn is really good about adding cute little accessories. And I thought that was really, really fun. So I'm going to be doing some paper piecing for the smaller um, balloons and that's because for the bigger balloons there is a separate basket stamp and die but there's not one for the smaller balloon so if I wanted to color the basket I needed to go ahead and stamp it color the basket and then we'll be paper piecing that balloon so I am using some patterns from doodlebug doodlebug has some of my favorite patterns and paper especially their kind of Easter spring line Christmas too but for real for Easter <laughs> In spring so I am just stamping the big balloons on this um, these three different patterns and we are going to be cutting those out and these are going to be our balloons now I didn't stamp great for that first balloon so I stamped it again and then I am going to bring in a C1 marker and this is just to add a little bit of dimension to these paper balloons um, I'm just going to be outlining, adding a little bit of shading like where I would put my darkest color and that just gives a little bit of life to these balloons and makes them look a bit more dimensional. You can see there that it's not a whole lot. Um, it's just enough to um, give them a little bit of dimension and I'm going to do that on all three of the larger balloons. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and start coloring our other little images. I will be cutting these out with the coordinating die. So for the elephants, I'm going to be using some warm grays. I'm using W5, W3, W1, and W0. And then for the cute little cheeks on the little tiny ones, I'm going to be using R20. So I like to do darkest to lightest, and then I go back and do it a second coat. So I'm adding the darkest where there are um, there would be shadows. So this elephant has its head leaning back. So there would be a shadow between his neck and under his ears on his back. 
Um, his ears are back, so those would also be darkest at the bottom. And then I'm just kind of blending the rest of it. The thing about Lawn Fawn Critters is they're not very big, so you don't have to worry about doing a whole lot of blending. But you do still want to have a little bit of dimension. And I really, really love how these cute little elephants turned out. This is such a cute stamp set. Their whole entire release this um, spring has been adorable. I will have all of the supplies that I'm using linked in the description box down below. There's also a coordinating blog post over on the scrapbookpal.com um, blog if you want to check it out for more information. So I went ahead and did two of each <laughs> other than the baskets and that's because um, I am notorious for messing up and I like to just have extras just in case. Plus, I went ahead and made a second card um, with my extras. And I just really, I just really love how it just how they turned out. They're just so adorable. For the um second elephant, I'm doing the exact same thing, coloring darkest to lightest. This one I tried to make just a little tad lighter. Um, and you could have gone with like W3, W1, W0, and then W00. You could have gone lighter like that. Um, I know a lot of people like a lot of dimension or a lot of lightness. So they'll just outline it and then go lighter that way. Um, coloring really is personal for personal preference. So you can really color how you feel that you want to. For these little tiny baby elephants, I'm literally just starting at the bottom with the darkest and then going lightest at the top. Again, there's not a whole lot of room to blend, so I am just using a couple of colors on them. For the mice, I went ahead and went with a warm kind of light brown. I didn't want to do a cool gray for them. Um, I wanted to keep this a little bit warmer. So I'm using E35, 33, 31, and 30. Um, again, you could have gotten away with doing this with just, or I could have gotten away with doing this with just three colors, but I brought in that 30 for the inside of the ears for the little ones that have the hat. So of course we're seeing the back of this mouse. So I'm going to color it the exact same way that I colored the elephant. And then for the ones that are facing us, you can see the inside their ear. So I'm going to go ahead and add that E30 inside their ear. And um, you could have added a little bit of R20 in their ears. I am going to use some R20 on their cheeks. But I decided it's just such a small space and there's going to be so many other things that are going to be the focal image that I just went ahead and went with E30. They are adorable though with their little party hats. Um, the other card I made with my extras, I turned into a graduation card for my niece who's graduating high school this year. So I already have her card ready to go. <laughs> it just needs to go with her gift. So for the party hat, I am using RV04 and then RV06. I'm starting with 04 to color the whole thing in and then I'm going in on two of the stripes with RV06. For the elephant's hat, I'm going to go ahead and use just one color. I'm going to be using BG, um, I believe it's 34. And then for the baskets, I'm using E49, E47, and E44. Um, I'm using the darkest color to kind of draw in a basket weave. And then going over it with the second color, and then I'm using the lightest color to color it in. Um, it just adds a tiny bit of texture. And um, anytime I've ever seen a hot air balloon, there has been um, like a regular basket on the end of it. So I went ahead and um, colored it that way. So here is a look of everything after I've cut it out. I went ahead and used my scissors to cut out the smaller two balloons and we're going to adhere. So you can see at the top right, <laughs> I messed up that one just a little bit. I was having problems with my die cutting machine. I bought the wrong size plates and learned very quickly that that is not a good idea. So um, I had one little mishap, but I am just using some Tombow Mono liquid glue to adhere the small balloon and pattern ballooned to the back and you can see there that it made the cutest little balloon and I was able to get my little brown basket and that was exactly the look I was going for. For the rest of them I'm going to bring in some mini glue dots and I just felt like that was easiest and I didn't have to mess with a lot of the liquid glue and um, because I am notorious for being messy. 
So I'm just using a Tim Holtz pick to um, take the glue dots off of its backing paper and then put it on the basket. Now, you could take the basket to the glue dots, but I find when I do that, I end up bending my image and I, I just, I hate it. <laughs> I hate when I do that. So I went ahead and just took it off with the pick and then put them on the back of the images. So here I am adhering the cute little elephant to the front of the basket. Um, so he just kind of sits on top and there we go. He's going to go fly away. Fly high little elephant. So I'm doing it to the um, little mouse as well. And this is where I realized that I wanted the elephants on the plaid and then the mouse on that one. But it's okay. I just went with it because it was not coming off. <laughs> so here's a look at everything assembled. And then of course, our background as well. Um, at the bottom, I had a piece that I had cut out with the Lawn Fawn grass border and um, just to see if I liked it and if that's where I wanted a place to put our elephant and our mouse because um, I felt like they needed somewhere to ground them. And that is also why I didn't go to the very, very bottom of this piece of paper when I was doing my stenciling. So this is just, you can't even see it on camera, but this is a striped piece of paper and again I used that lawn fawn grassy border die to cut it out. So in this stamp set you get two cloud stamps and two in their coordinating dies. Rather than stamping it I just used the smaller of the dies to cut out some white clouds and I, I only did three but I feel like that really brought this backdrop to life and I didn't want it to look like it was storming but I also didn't want to mess with white pigment ink um you could have used stays on like white stays on or even white paint to color the um clouds and I actually thought about going in with a little white gel pen to go around the darker of the clouds but I went ahead and just brought in the white clouds instead for the bigger balloons, I'm going to be going and popping those up. I'm just using some foam squares from Scrapbook Adhesive. Again, all of the supplies will be linked in the description box down below. Um, I went ahead and adhered the small balloons flat and then popped up the big balloons. What I love about this, it's also perspective. So the little balloons are further away and then the bigger balloons are closer. So... Um, and popping them up just give, gave them a little bit of movement, which I really, really liked. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere these two pieces. There's a big piece, and then I cut this small little strip. And you can see on the back that it has a green and white stripe. And then you turn it over, then it's green with like a very faint stripe. So I left the adhesive at the bottom. That way I could go ahead and stick in our little characters. So I'm going to glue in the... Um, elephant and then I'm going to glue in one of the mice and then that's going to be basically it. I'm going to bring in a shimmer pen because I have to. I have to have glitter on all of the things. So I'm going to bring in a Nuvo shimmer pen and once I do that, that's it. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our other social media and be sure to check out the supplies in the description box down below. We'll see you in our next video. Bye for now. Bye.